Focus. There we go. We're in there somewhere. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here. Got a super board on this Sunday, so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to break out the old turkey vest. See what's in it. See what's in it from last year. Honestly, I don't know what's... Uh, I haven't brought it out of the closet since the last weekend, so we've got two weeks away till uh, the Georgia turkey season, and uh, we're just we're fired up about it. I want to see what's in the vest, go over some gear, some calls, some decoys, some boxes, all that good stuff, give you an inside look of what we run in the turkey vest here on the channel. If you haven't already, check out Mojo Buck 80 on Instagram. I appreciate you guys following along there. Uh, stay tuned with us all this spring. We got a huge video coming up with the patterns. Got a new choke, got an exclusive look at the new Fast Fire 4 from Burris on Old Steve. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. I could rob a bank in an old Mustang. I could fight the cops with my bare two hands. End up in jail, eating microwave. All right, guys. So this is going to be just a rough breakdown of the turkey vest, kind of show you what I run in it, what gear I use, what I prefer, and maybe you can pick up something that you see today and utilize it in your turkey hunting system. So from the get-go, probably the, the foundation of what you're going to want, obviously, is a vest to start with. Uh, I've gone through several. Uh, the one that I started out with was the super famous Primos Gobbler Vest. That thing's awesome. It's got a great seat. It's got a bunch of pockets. I just wanted something a little more robust, I guess is the word. So I went with Alps, uh, the Alps Outdoor brand. As you can see, shot right there. These guys make uh, killer products. Uh, my choice in camouflage, I went with, of course, Bottomlands. It's great. I like a little bit of darker camo. Uh, as you know, the woods in most people's uh, you know, early spring are still dead, kind of like deer season. You're super great out. So Bottomlands will stick with you from opening day uh, through the transition to when everything starts getting green, uh, everything starts blooming in the woods, and you can still still blend in. I'm going to be rocking a lot of the Sitka gear subalpine this year, as you'll see on the channel. So this Bottomlands complements it pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I went with the Alps Outdoors. This is the impact vest. This is the one with the internal seat. So you can see the straps here. You don't have to have a tree with this vest, which is really cool. So if you get up on a field edge, can't find that perfect tree, you deploy the seat. Magnet closure there. It's got a rubber waterproof bottom. It's not the thickest seat. It's probably the only negative thing I could say so far after running it all year is the seat's not real, you know, and it's not going to be for an all-day sit or nothing. But for the running gun guy, even if you got to ditch this thing, it's pretty freaking sweet. So let's see. Like I said, this is... I'm not going to really edit this, just kind of a one cut here because I, I, I have not been in this vest since last, you know, last week of season. So we'll just go from the, let's see, the left side, top vest pocket. All right, we've got a Strutton 360 remote, which we'll go over decoy selection here in a minute. But this will remind you guys, especially your waterfowl guys, of a, like a Lucky Duck or a spinner. But this is more like for a remote for your decoys so you deploy the strutton 360 when you got time to set this thing up it's freaking sweet i need to put new batteries in this but it makes your decoy just like the name implies you know 360 degree motion it makes that strutter decoy just come alive and bring that guy in that's hung up maybe into gun range so i always keep that on me uh top pocket all right we've got a knife of course every turkey hunter needs a knife Wild turkey, handmade. Little skinning knife there for obviously when you uh, are lucky enough to get a hold of that gobbler up close, you're gonna need to breast him out. Uh, this came from my great friend, Tom Bojo. I get to turkey hunt with him at least twice a year and he sent me this in the mail last spring, so sentimental value there. Tom's a good dude. Uh, I've got a turkey tote. These have become a lot more popular uh, in the later years of turkey season seasons have gone by people have had a uh, turkey toast this one's made by totem lanyards a really good dude out of texas this thing's awesome you can put this on their feet neck head however you want to tote him out hang him up in a tree for a picture you know it's always a always a good way these things weigh nothing so it's not like you're taking up a bunch of room that's the top pocket moving on all right this is the shell pocket that alps gives you got a couple more loops for mouth call stuff like that I use this as my 
ammunition store, also a little locator call. This is a, the Coyote call. Copied that from Shane Simpson. Of course, he can do it with the diaphragm, which is pretty slick, but running some mismatched 20 gauge. Looks like some 12 gauge in here, so I don't know. I was using a little bit of everything last year, mostly 20 gauge though, so that makes sense. Let's see what's on the back side of the left pocket. You got a big zipper pocket here. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep this. Okay, on the left side of the vest, this makes sense now that I'm seeing it. This is my spare set of masks and spare set of gloves. Because in turkey hunting, uh, if you've been turkey hunting very long, obviously you want to be camied up from head to toe. But also, you want to make sure guys that are with you are, are camied up head to toe. So, you know, masks and gloves are always something that you could lose in the woods. On your first trip, opening day, whatever, you always want to have two. On turkey hunting, two is one, one is none. That's a great rule of thumb to remember. So that's that side of the pocket. Let's see what else we got here. I've already been fiddling around with this while we've been out here. Uh, this is the your right side pocket. Really nothing in this top one. You can put a cell phone, mouth call, keys, whatever in there. I really don't utilize that personally. The second pocket below this, the NWTF logo is printed. It's freaking sweet. Uh, friction call pocket. So right here, I've got a foggy bottom. Dipped an OG from Primo, so I really like this call. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that does have a thousand strikers in his in his pouch. Uh, slate call pocket, of course, with some Scotch Bright, something to roughen up that surface. And your strikers. Like I got a Primo striker. Another Primo striker, a Woodhaven call striker. You know, I, different strikers are different birds in my eyes, so I like to have a couple different options in case he's being stubborn that day. It's not going to give you a gobble. Give him a little bit different sound. Uh, right here in the box call pocket. Let's see if I get this open. Uh, I don't really run a box call a whole lot, but this year I'm going to give this bad boy a try. This is the, the Headhunter Turkey Calls box call by my good buddy Neil Jacobs as you can see custom made cherry box with Paduke lid and base headhunter turkey calls 2021 this thing's a absolute beast of course you see his signature buffalo head nickel inlaid in the box that thing is that's gonna be wicked uh, what's in here all right this is my main set of gloves and masks so we've got a OG bottom land neck buff. That thing's a. Uh, I like a neck buff more personally than more like a netted kind of a, you know, mass type deal. Of course, everybody's wearing masks these days, so you got a preference. Uh, this is a brand new set of gloves I'm trying out from North Mountain Gear. Again, an OG. I opted for the ones with the trigger finger and the thumb cut out, and they actually come like this, so you don't have to burn them and wear. You know, ragged out gloves all season. They're actually made like that from the factory. They're got grip texture on the inside. I'll give you a report back on these. I like how thin they are. I just hope they're they're pretty durable. We'll see. We'll see how uh, how they wear throughout the season. So that's those. This is my favorite pocket. My call of choice would be a diaphragm. Uh, this is, I believe, one of the Ninja series from Woodhaven. You can see it's a it's pretty gnarly. It's been through some. It's been through some hunts, so that's old faithful from last year. I picked this up a couple weeks ago just to, I believe, <laughs> drop it. That'll be good. I uh, picked this up at Bass Pro the other day, just a fresh Woodhaven call. For as inexpensive as, as these are, uh, you know, I'm just going to pick a fresh one up every year instead of trying to reuse these. Of course, they say you can keep them in the freezer and have them forever, but I don't know. I just like a fresh set opening day. I'm sure you guys are the same. All right, let's flip this bad boy to the back. This vest has a huge pocket. Uh, this internal pocket is for a bladder, I believe. I don't use it for that. Let's see if it's still in here. Looks like I've got an extra stake for the, the Strutton 360. Let's see what else is actually in here. Looks like this is the stakes for the Strutton 360 apparatus. Usually, uh, Pro tip here, if anybody you've ever hunted with me personally, you know me especially, uh, <laughs> you get in the woods and get a turkey goblin, you may get you know, excited to get some uh, your breakfast moving inside the system with a cup of coffee. I keep a Ziploc bag full of about a half a roll of toilet paper. Uh, I've had, ha I have had 
to pass out toilet paper to guys hunt with me. So I'm the guy that has it. I keep it in a Ziploc bag, obviously, to keep it dry so if you get caught in the rain. You've always got TP in the turkey vest. Number one pro tip, don't forget it. You'll thank me later. Uh, second thing I like to keep in here that I know I don't have because I used them last year is at least two or three black, thick trash bags. This does two things. You can haul your turkey out in it when you get to your truck. If you're in a car, you have to put it on the inside. It's great to have that. Uh, if you've got at least two, if you have to cross a creek or some kind of river system, uh, you've got something to put on top of your boots if you're running just some small height, you know, hiking boots. You can put them up, they come up to your knees. You can cross that creek or river, you know, as long as it's that deep. Save your boots from getting wet. Uh, and also, if you're running a camera like we are going to this year, if you get caught in the rain, my camera's not a completely weather sealed, so I'm going to have a trash bag to throw on it to get it out of the woods. So trash bags are great. I like the big, thick, black plastic ones. You can get them at, you know, Costco, Walmart, Kroger's, whatever. Keep those. I've got some decoy bags. Obviously, we run Zinc, Avian X. In my opinion, some of the best decoys on the market for the money. This thing is, uh, I believe this is just a submissive hen. I'd like to pick up a feeding hen eventually, but I love the detail. Obviously, the feather detail is great. This one, I've had it. I bought it in Mississippi probably two years ago. Inflatable. Of course, you got to have steaks. Let's see if I've got the steak. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. These Avian X steaks, I actually just had to order a set of two. I lost one the other day. Just a two-piece steak with a bungee. These are great. You can beat the crap out of these. I think they're like $7 if you break one. I haven't broke one. I just happen to lose them all the time. So there's that. Obviously, guys pick you up a thermosail. This is an older one that my dad gave me. Always keep a refill and some extra wafers to go on the inside. This is uh, worth its weight in gold. Obviously, if you've used one, you know. Uh, let's see what else. I like a gun pod on my knee sometimes. Obviously, I'm running old Steve, you know, the single shot 20 gauge. He's not extremely heavy and hard to keep up, but if you can call hands free, put your uh, gun on your knee, let it rest there. You know, the gun in the upright position waiting on a turkey is key. You know, you want to be ready when they come through, so that's going to help you with that. Uh, light source, good light source of any kind. This has the red light that I like a lot. Matching camouflage. This is a Princeton Tech, I believe. It says somewhere. Yeah, Princeton Tech, Gamekeeper. They teamed up with Mossy Oak, made up the headband. Obviously, doesn't really matter. It just looks cool. Uh, turkey wing. Turkey wing is... It's something that you can make a lot of noise with when you need to. You can scratch in the leaves. You can make a fly down. Super easy to make. You know, when you kill your next bird, you know, I like just a real small one so I can get a hold of it. You know, fly down call, whatever you want to do. I use borax instead of salt. Keeps the bugs away plus salt. Dealing with all that crap. On turkey decoys, uh, like you saw earlier, I do like the Avian X hen. If I'm going to run a strutting 360 or decoy similar, uh, I do like to pair it with a half strut decoy. As you can see here, this is the Avian X uh, three quarter strut. You blow them up nice, whereas tail fan is in the half up position. And it really just seems to work good. I like having his beard out straight. It's got the realistic legs blow up again it accepts the strutting 360 stakes of course it's got the avian x stakes already but it's really not heavy he deflates a little bit throw them in the back of the bag throw them in your vest pretty portable uh in certain situations yeah you can use a fan you can use a full strutter i just think for the running gun guy obviously decoys you're probably going to leave them uh, with your vest but if you do have time to set up and put a put a, a jake imitation or a strutter out there i think this is one of your best options they do have a new one now that's the hard body, which that joker looks freaking real. Uh, I'd be scared to take something like that on public land. It looks so real. But this bird right here is a little bit cheaper. And the hard body option, I think that's cool. But for actually packing it in the vest, I think that'd be pretty difficult. All right. That was it, guys. Short and sweet for this Sunday's video. I hope you enjoyed the turkey vest uh, dump gear review whatever you want to call it if you saw anything in the vest that you guys want to take and use during you know turkey season you know adapt it to your vest system however you want to use it if you got a question or anything i can help you with shoot me a dm let me know comment down below i really appreciate the support guys again have a safe spring 
get out in the woods, take somebody new hunt, introduce them. Guys, get you a big old gobbler this year and be safe and have a great time doing it. Until next time, see you guys.